Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of yet another radio transmission of a Wagnerian opera in the form of Das Rheingold, live from the Bayreuther Festspielhaus, which I heard on Bay Era Classic, and the link of the entire transmission is on the description box below, so please listen to it if you have the time. And on the podium was the ever-magnificent, ever-wonderful Marek Janowski, who was very well known for conducting a lot of the Germanic operas. This opera jettisons the entire actions which happen in the Ring Saga. And here's one thing I seem to notice in a lot of the Wagnerian operas. Richard Wagner really loves to play with consonants. From the Valkyries, Hoyo to Ho, Hoya Ha, to Hagen's Hoi Ho, to Zenta's Yo Ho 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 e, and also with the Sailors to the Rhine Maidens, Vaya Vaga Vugduvella, Vaya Vaga Vavaya, you could really tell that Wagner really has a certain attention to a lot of the consonants, not just for them to sound pretty and not just for them to be like well articulated, but they also have a certain poetic meaning as they were also derived from the Edda, which is basically a collection of Nordic poems and Nordic stories, and he basically uses them in this opera in particular. The opera begins as we see the Rhine maidens, Voglinda, Velgunda, and Flosshilde, swimming around the river and playing with each other while guarding the Rhine gold. Alberich comes into the picture to flirt with them at first, but after being rejected for three times, he decides that he's not going to play nice and steals the gold, thus making the Rhine maidens mourn for the loss of their treasure. We then cut to the home of the gods, Valhalla, in which we see Wotan at first resting and dreaming of his dream castle. Fricka comes in to bear horrible news that the giants are about to take Freya as ransom for the entire debts he has to pay for them building the castle. Fru and Donna come into the picture to defend their sister from the giants, but it's all too useless as the giants take Freya away, and it's up to Wotan and Loga to not only rescue Freya, but also to give them the ransom in the form of the Rheingold and, of course, the mysterious and powerful ring. So they head off to the home of the Nibelungs, where poor Mima has been bullied by his older brother Alberich, and Alberich also has the Tarnhelm in which Mima has therefore made, which can basically make him transform into all of these creatures, including a huge serpent and a small toad. Wotan and Loga have the upper hand with Alberich's negotiations and therefore make him turn into a toad, capturing him and therefore capturing the ring, but... This proves all too fatal. Even though they give the gold as ransom to the giants, we have Fafna wanting the ring, but Fazolt wants it for himself. Therefore leading to, at first, a little skirmish between the two brothers, but therefore leads to murder, where Fafna batters Fazolt to death, which also ties in to Erda's warning that the gods should give up the ring for there will be fatal consequences. Unable to take this horrible sight, Donna summons his cloud and the gods head off to Valhalla with the Rhine maidens mourning for their loss and Loga reminds the audience that this is just only the beginning of the drama that is yet to come in the next three operas. So just like its successors, Valkyra, Siegfried, and Goethe Demeron, Das Rheingold has found international success as one of Wagner's most popular operas of all time, totally on the ranks of Fliegende Holländer, Tannhäuser, Lohengrin, Tristan und Isolde, Die Meistersinger von Nürnberg, and Parsifal. You could really tell that these operas have had such international fame and gained the popularity that Wagner so deserves. 
Before I get on to the singing, a few words about the production. I didn't really care for it. Even though I didn't see the video transmission, I did see some pictures of the production via Google. And I have to say that they didn't really grab me. The costumes, while looking elegant in their own ways, just didn't really appeal to me. The same thing can be said about the scenery and all of the decorations found in the entire production. I'm missing the magic. I am missing the enchantment. I am missing the pizzazz. I am missing lots of things that really make Wagner's ring very much something that is mythical and magical. I am missing all of those mythical elements. With that rambling out of the way, let's get on to what I thought about the singers starting off with the gods, headed by Ayane Patterson as Wotan. As I said before in my review of Die Valkyrie in the Budapest State Opera House, Wotan is one of the most coveted roles for any bass baritone ever. It is just as coveted as Hans Zachs, Boris Godunov, Don Giovanni, King Philip, Attila, Don Basilio, and many, many other roles that really need a wonderful bass baritone to not only sing the very, very low notes, but also some of the high notes as well. With Ian Patterson as Voltan, I really love the color of his voice. It's rich and round and creamy and has a very fine ebullient presence. And he uses that regal voice to his advantage. And he just has a very wonderful color and very wonderful timbre to his voice all throughout, making Voltan a very noble and regal figure on the radio, which is not an easy task. And he manages to really embody Wotan wonderfully. Yes, he has a lot of competition, one of his predecessors being the great and powerful Hans Hotta, being one of the most notable Wotans of all time, but I thought he was definitely wonderful in his own special way in this role and manages to really hold up on his own throughout the entire opera. Then we go to Donna, the god of thunder, storms, and strength, sung by the German lyric dramatic baritone Markus Eiche. Donna really requires a dramatic baritone who can sing smoothly yet powerfully. Someone who specialized in the likes of Papageno, Guglielmo, Rigoletto, Francesco Moore from Masnadieri, Carlo from Ernani, Renato from Unballo and Mascara, Marcello from La Boheme, Sharpless from Madama Butterfly, Sonora from La Fanciulla del Vest, Gianni Schicchi from Gianni Schicchi, Ford from Falstaff, Iago from Otello, Carlo from La Forza del Destino, and many, many other roles which really require a fine dramatic baritone to embody all these roles, yet still sing very smoothly. With Marcus Eiche as Donna, I thought he sang very wonderfully in this role. He has such a fine and smooth baritone instrument. It's rich and creamy. It's mellifluous. And he just has a great sense of musicianship, which I really admire in any baritone singing Donna. He sings both lyrically and gives him that dramatic push to really make Donna come alive. And his articulation is absolutely Flawless. Then we go to the trickster demigod of fire, Loga, sung by Roberto Sacca, who therefore made his Bayreuth debut. Loga has attracted a lot of tenors, whether they be character tenors, spinto tenors, full lyric tenors, or even Helden tenors. There has been no shortage of tenors who therefore specialize in this tenor role who steals the show. My personal preference for any voice for Loga is any tenor once upon a time was a full lyric tenor, but has nowadays sung a lot of the spinto tenor roles. 
I really love voices like Ramon Vinay, Wolfgang Windgassen, Kenneth Neat, Fritz Uhl, Siegfried Jerusalem, Manfred Jung, Peter Hoffmann, Dominic Natoli, Richard Croft, and many, many other superb tenors who have sung this role. Oh, and also Julius Pötzer and Julius Patzak. With Roberto Sacca, what more can I expect from this guy? He has a very superb instrument which he manipulates very well. Over the years, we have seen Maestro Saka specialize in a lot of the lyric tenor roles in the past, but has therefore moved on into singing more spinto tenor roles and even some dramatic tenor roles as well. He started off singing roles like Belmonte and Don Ottavio, the Duke, and Alfredo from La Traviata, and has moved on to singing roles like Walter von Stolzing from the Meistersinger von Nuremberg, Lohengrin, Loge, and Eleazar from La Juive. You could really tell that this is a voice which is versatile and just so handsome throughout all the registers. I definitely enjoyed listening to this gentleman as Loge making him sarcastic, biting, yet also very musical as well, as he really sings the character and not shouts it or barks it whatsoever. He has a very fine form in terms of his voice, and he really proves that he is definitely a versatile singer who can embody different characters any way till Sunday. Then we have Fro, sung by the young lyric tenor Tanzel Axheibek. Unlike Loga's more spinto and dramatic singing, Fro needs a more lyrical tenor, yet at times has been sung by a lot of spinto tenors. There has been no shortage of tenors who have sung Fro, the likes of Hans Hopf, Zandor Tonja, Jeffrey Lawton, Siegfried Jerusalem, Mark Baker, and many, many other superb tenors who have sung this wonderful role, even though it is quite thankless. Any tenor who has sung the likes of Leopold from La Juive, David from Meistersinger from Nuremberg, the young sailor from Tristan und Isolde, the Duke from Rigoletto, Alfredo from La Traviata, both Belmonte and Pedrillo from Entführung aus dem Serail, Alma Viva from Il Barbiere di Sevilla, Ramiro from Cenerentola, Lindoro from Italiana and Algeri, Ruodi from Guillaume Tell, and many of these superb lyric tenor roles, which calls for a tenor who can be able to sing all of these light and lyrical passages very well with a fine technique. And I thought that with Tanzel Aksaibek, he has a bright future ahead of him. And this is evidence of all the roles I have seen him sing, like the sailor and the shepherd from Tristan und Isolde, one of the knights from Parsifal, and now Fro from this opera. He has a superb instrument, and he has a very dashing vocal presence, and he just really uses his voice to the best of his abilities, making Fro come alive with nobility, dignity, and an overall sense of musical intelligence, which he embodies very well to this character. And now we go to the goddesses, starting off with Erda, sung by the superb German mezzo-contralto Nadine Weissmann, who I also heard yesterday as Frau Mari from Der Fliegende Holländer. As I said before in a lot of my other reviews, Erda really needs a deep, dark, rich, cavernous contralto who can hit all the low notes and who can be able to give off such a firm and sturdy and steady stage presence. Any contralto who sang Erda 
has found successes in singing roles like Clitum Nestra, Madalena from Nirgoletto, Ulrika from Un Balo en Maschera, Mistress Quickly from Falstaff, Cheka from La Gioconda, The Princess from Suor Angelica, Sita from Gianni Schicchi, Adelaide from Arabella, and Gaia from Daphne, and even the nurse from Boris Godunov, Mama Lucia from Cavalieri Rius de Canna, Madelon from Andrea Chenier, and many, many other superb parts for a true, dark, rich, cavernous dramatic control. My ideal voices for Erda really have to be the likes of Res Fischer, Jean Madeira, Elsa Schürhoff, Maureen Forrester, Vera Sokupov, and of course, the magnificent Eva Podlesch. I thought that with Nadine Weissmann, she has a very solid instrument which she continues to use, and she has all of the solid low notes and a very gorgeous and dominating vocal presence. However, I'm sort of missing that dark tone, which is so prevalent in the likes of Res Fischer and Eva Podlesch. But for what she had to embody, I still have to give my huge kudos to Nadina Weissmann for really embodying this character with dignity, beauty, and strength which few other contraltos could ever do. Then we have the goddess of marriage, Fricka, sung by the British lyric dramatic mezzo, Sarah Connolly. As I said before in my review of Die Valkyra, much like Botan, Fricka is also quite coveted for a lot of dramatic mezzos. Any mezzo-soprano who has the low notes of a Madame de la Haltière or Federica from Luisa Miller, to having the high notes of that of an Azucena, Preziosilla, Eboli, Frugola, Herodias, Nurse from Frau on a Schatten, and even the Overseer from Electra, all found successes really embodying the queen of the goddesses. There has been no shortage of dramatic mezzos who embodied this role, my personal favorites really have to be Elisabeth Hungen, Margarete Klose, Christa Ludwig, Brigitta Fassbender, Doris Zoffel, Nadine Denise, and even to some extent Reinhild Runkel, even though I love Madame Runkel more as Erda, the Earth Goddess. With Sarah Connolly, much like her predecessors being Christa Ludwig, Brigitta Fassbender, and Doris Zoffel, this was a singer who started off as a more lyrical singer in a lot of the works by Mozart, Handel, Gluck, and even some of the bel canto repertoire, but has therefore transitioned into the more dramatic mezzo roles of Brangena and Fricka and maybe even Eboli. Just like Ludwig, Fassbender, and Zoffel, just to name a few exponents who found themselves singing lyric mezzo roles in the beginning of their career, but have therefore made themselves well known as dramatic mezzos, Sarah Connolly has a sturdy, strong, and really gorgeous instrument which she uses very well. It is a true lyric dramatic mezzo-soprano instrument which she uses very well, and she basically embodied Fricka with a sense of dignity, suffering, pain, and that sort of brilliance, charisma, and dignity which I always love in any mezzo singing Fricka. She truly was a pro in this role. Then we go to her sister Freya, who is the goddess of youth and beauty, known for having a garden of golden apples, which maintains the god's youth. We have the wonderful young spinto soprano Caroline Wenborn. Freya really calls for a true spinto or even a dramatic soprano to embody this thankless character. Yes, she does have a lot of lyrical singing, but what's most important is that she should also sound young, yet also dramatic. So you could really tell that this character role is extremely thankless for loads and loads of spintos or dramatic sopranos 
who have sung this. You have had singers embodying this role, like Inga Bork, Lene Rezanek, Ingrid Bjona, Claire Watson, Gundula Janowitz, and many, many other superb spinto and dramatic sopranos who have embodied this role, who have therefore made this role their own, even though it is quite the thankless sing. And I thought that with Caroline Wenborn, what a voice she had as Freya. It seems as though that every time I listen to this fine artist, she seems to grow better and better and better every time she takes on a new role, and this is no exception. Her singing is especially dramatic, yet maintains that full, rich, and creamy timbre, which she is so well known for. And she embodied Freya very, very well. And she really made her stand out in her own special way, which is absolutely phenomenal. And I can consider it as a feat. So she really did wonderfully as Freya. Then we go to the Nibelung Dwarves, starting off with Alberich, sung by the superb German bass baritone Albert Dohmen, who has reigned the stage for many years as Wotan in the said tetralogy. Alberich really calls for a dark-sounding, villainous, and scary-sounding dramatic baritone to contrast with that of Wotan's dark bass baritone voice, Donna's smooth-sounding dramatic baritone voice, and even to a lot of the tenor's high singing voices and the giant's darker, rounder, richer, more cavernous voices. His voice is somewhere in the middle, almost like Donna's, but his is more vicious sounding and villainous. His voice should also be that ideal for singing roles like Telramund, the Dutchman, Kurvenal, Klingzor, Scarpia, Sheriff Jack Rance, Michele from Il Tabarro, Rambaldo from La Rondine, Amunazro from Aida, Fra Melitone from La Forza del Destino, Nabucco from Nabucco, Monforte from I Vespri Siciliani, Il Vecchio Miller from Luisa Miller, Rigoletto, and even to some extent Giorgio Germo from La Traviata, Jack the Ripper and Dr. Schön from Lulu, and Wozzeck from Wozzeck. There has been no shortage of Helden baritones and bass baritones who have specialized in this role. Some of the most famous exponents include the likes of Gustav Neidlinger, who dominated the stage as Albrecht for many years, Franz Andersson, Hermann Becht, and Gunther von Kahnen, just to name a few gentlemen who have specialized as Albrecht, lest I forget about the inimitable Ekahad Vlashiha, who has been very well known in singing all of these scary and villainous baritone roles, and he is definitely a pro at that role, and he still is to this very day. With Albert Dohmen as Albrecht, to really see him in this transition going from Wotan to this role is such a feat. Yes, there were other baritones who did this feat as well, like Zygmunt Nimskern and Hartmut Welka, just to name a few exponents who have done this transition from Wotan to Albert, therefore alternating between the two roles. And I thought that with Albert Dohmen, he really gives off a fine amount of menace and bite, which is very much helped by his dark, round, and rich bass baritone voice. Over the years, we have seen Herr Dolman specialize in a huge array of bass baritone and basso cantante roles. His basso cantante roles consist of that of Enrico from Anna Bolena and Filippo from Don Carlo, and his bass baritone roles consist of Hollander, Wotan, Hans Sachs, Gurnemans, Amfortas, and even the likes of King Henry the Fowler from Lohengrin. You could really tell just how much of a pro Herr Dolman is in embodying all of these characters, whether they be villains, noblemen, or kings, or old men, you could really tell that he is definitely a pro at his job at embodying all these characters. 
he has a very superb instrument which he uses very well and his vocal presence as always to be expected from someone like Herdoman is something to be recognized with all the time. Then we go to Mime, sung by the superb German character tenor Andreas Konrad. Mima has attracted loads and loads of character tenors, and my personal favorites have always been the likes of Heinz Zednik, Peter Hage, and Graham Clark, as these guys really knew how to embody Mima in terms of making him a wily and clever figure, yet maintains that scary sounding character tenor singing. And I thought that with Andreas Konrad, he really does do a good job making Mima a snively little bastard, but at the same time has that sense of menace and cleverness, which he injects very, very well. And he was an absolutely fine musician, making the best out of this very thankless character. Now we go to the giants, Fafna and Fazl, sung respectively by Karl Heinz Lena as Fafna and Gunther Groisberg as Fazl. With these two giants, you really need either two basso cantantes with really great low notes or two basso profundos with magnificent low notes, or have Fafna be sung by a basso profundo and have Fazot be sung by a basso cantante. Fafna really needs a true, dark, cavernous, rich, and scary sounding basso profundo voice. That type of voice that's so ideal for the likes of Osmin, Il Comendatore, The Grand Inquisitor, Zarastro, Titorel, Landgraf, Hermann, Pimen, Arkel, and all of these roles which specialize in a lot of old men and all of these villainous and scary roles for Abbaso Profondo. And with Fazot, yes, he also does need a huge and dark sounding Basso Profondo voice as well. But I also like to see a Basso Cantante voice singing Fazot, any Basso who has sung the likes of Hans Sachs, Heinrich der Vogler, King Mark. Worm from Luisa Miller, Massimiliano from Imaz Nadieri, Silva from Hernani, Boris Godunov, Gremen from Eugene Onegin, and many, many other superb roles for a basso cantante. Let's start off with Herr Lena, as he has a very fine and rich voice, ideal for Faf. In fact, I love his embodiment more than his embodiment of he really improved as the seasons went on and he really gave off some superb sounding tones which he's very well known for and he added a lot of menace and bite to this giant going to Gunther Groisberg as Fazelt he has a very superb basso profondo instrument which is no surprise because last year I saw this gentleman as Landgraf Hermann from the Met in Live HD production of Tannhäuser and he was absolutely wonderful in the basso part. So both bassos really did magnificently as the two giants in terms of Fafna and Fazot. It's always great to have bassos who've specialized respectively as the Grand Inquisitor and Philip, Titurel and Gurnemans, Daland and the Dutchman, Veit Pogner and Hans Zach, and to even to some extent Zarastro and one of the armed men really going at each other and really embodying these two big giant brothers. And then we go to the Rhine Maidens, starting off with Alexandra Steiner as Voglinda. With Voglinda, you really need a light soprano to sing very, very high and to sing very graciously as well. Well, with Alexandra Steiner, she did very magnificently, and it's also helped with a slightly creamy tone, which she has added superbly to her voice. Then we go to Velgun, sung by Stephanie Holtzale, who does a very, very fine job, even though I would have loved to have a light lyric soprano embody Velgunda. I still have to give my hat off to someone like Stephanie Holtzale for really embodying Velgunda. The same can be said about Vibke Lehmkuhl 
as Flosilda, as she needs a lyric mezzo voice to really embody this character. And she did absolutely fabulously in this role. And these three Rye Maidens sang heavenly. It's like heaven on earth. So overall, the singing was absolutely top tier. And the conducting done by Marek Janowski was also wonderful, really paying close attention to the text and really making sure that his singers and the orchestra do wonderfully, all in all, and in harmony. So overall, the singing was absolutely phenomenal. The same thing I can say about the conducting. Everyone did magnificently in my eyes, or in this case, my ears. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in later for yet another Wagner opera review in the form of Die Meistersinger von Nuremberg live from the Bayerische Staatsoper. So until then, have a great day, everybody.